Hello, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the conservation of angular momentum and how a cat finds itself in midair and flips over and lands on its feet without a torque. Here I have an equation relating torque to the change in the angular momentum divided by the time. Mathematically, uh, we would write torque uh, using the symbol ta. L, capital L stands for angular momentum. T stands for time, so we have the change in the angular momentum divided by the time interval is equal to the torque. Written in this form, the angular momentum change is equal to the torque multiplied by the time interval. So when the torque is equal to zero, when the torque is equal to zero, the angular momentum change is also equal to zero, which means that the angular momentum remains constant. So when the torque is zero, the angular momentum does not change. Here I have a statement, the angular momentum remains constant when the net torque is equal to zero. Now it turns out that in free fall, for all objects, including falling cats, the net torque is zero during the entire time of free fall. Therefore, as the falling cat rotates over to land on its feet, the total angular momentum remains constant, in fact, remains zero during that entire time. Let me state this one more time. The falling cat rotates over to land on its feet while the net or total angular momentum remains zero. Now, I'd like to demonstrate how that works. Here I have a cat that I've invented and built, and uh, we could call it the mechanical cat. And I'll show that this works just like the real cat does, and as I hold it upside down, and release it, I'm going to pull my hand straight away without flipping it, so there'll be zero torque, and I'm going to let the cat enjoy its free fall, and it'll flip over to land on its feet. Maybe one more time, so you can see uh, how that does it. Flips over to land on its feet. Now let's talk in detail about how that could happen. Here I have the cat with some joints. Here I have three spinal joints. They're flexible, but not totally collapsible. And I have some muscles going down the back of the spine, and I have one little muscle over on the side. Now, of course, a real cat has more spinal joints than that. I'm just representing three here. And it also has more uh, processes down the side that muscles are attached to, and also down the other side. In fact, cats have some processes in between. The processes are these little appendages that the muscles are fastened onto. So we have the processes here that I've... Uh, put in here as little eye bolts into this copper tubing. We have the uh, spinal joints, which I've put into springs. And then we have the muscles, which are still additional springs. And these are the main muscles that cause the cat to flip over. And this muscle here gives it just a little bit of bias so that these muscles can do their job. I'll explain that just a little bit more uh, in, a, in a minute or two. Now, to see how that uh, spinal joint works, here I have a, uh, a simpler model, and this represents uh, the backbone of a cat. This is the spinal joint, and this is the muscle. And the cat now has its feet in the air, and it's going to bow its back. And this is a key to this mechanism. It's going to bow its back. It's going to tighten its muscle. And then that muscle can relax either by shortening this way or by shortening this way. I'll do that one more time and then watch that muscle shorten and watch this thing twist around. I'm just going to hold it loosely in my fingers here, just tight enough to hold it to start with. Then I'm going to loosen my grip on it and let that back muscle cause that cat to spin around and with its feet in the air, it's going to turn around to where its feet point toward the ground. Now, back to the more complicated cat which is still, still simpler than the real cat, but works in essentially the same way. I bow the back, tighten the muscles. Those muscles can either relax this way or they can relax by turning around this way. Now, the textbooks talk about the cat rotating, counter-rotating in such a way that it can crank itself around. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that explanation, but uh, it... It's not complete. To really understand how the cat works, we have to understand how the muscles are attached to the spine and how it's muscular action through the bending of the spine that causes the cat 
to turn over. So next what I'd like to do is uh, show in some detail, using my hands as a model, of how the cat actually twists over without a net change in angular momentum. So let's imagine that uh, my two hands are the two halves of a cat's uh, spine, and here the cat is with its feet in the air, back to the ground, feet in the air. Now let's imagine that through some process there's a muscle tight here and a muscle tight here that can pull my two hands together. So one hand rotates, this, my right hand rotates toward my left hand and vice versa, so my two hands rotate together and that constitutes no change in angular motion because uh, the two halves are rotating in opposite directions. And now once I get them in this position, I'm now going to take my two hands and rotate them back to back like this. And again, that's zero net change with one hand rotating one way and the other hand rotating the other way. And then I'm going to open them up like this. And again, that's zero net change. So what we've had is a change in orientation without a change in net rotation. The angular momentum has been zero throughout the entire operation. Let me do that one more time. Rotate my hands together, swing them around this way, back to back, and then open it up. Now, in fact, the cat can't do that because it's not that flexible. It doesn't totally collapse, but in fact, what happens is the cat partially collapses. It bends like this and then rotates around in that fashion. So the cat, upside down, bows its back, and then it twists around in that fashion. Again, with the, uh, with the full cat here, if we call it that, I'll let it bow its back, tighten its muscles, and then I'll release it and let it come down and land on its feet. Now, it turns out that this can also be uh, scaled up or scaled down. Here I have uh, another version of the mechanical cat. This looks more like a rat than a cat, but nevertheless, if I properly energize this, uh, it'll flip over, pull my hand straight away, and it'll flip over to land on its feet also. Here's another one. This is an early model. The cat's evolved a little bit since uh, this was first built, but nevertheless, this one will work also to flip over and land on its feet. In fact, I've got a, I've got a cat here that's a... Uh, just a little toy, uh, uh, not, a, not, a, not a real cat. This isn't real cat fur here. Nevertheless, I put a skeleton inside of this cat. So what I have is one of these skeletons inside this cat, and when properly energized, you can even put fur on a cat, if you're careful how you do this, and hold the cat upside down and let it flip over and land on its feet. Now, what I'd like to do is explain to you, if you've never done this before, and if you decide to purchase one of these, and I'll tell you in a few minutes how you can, if you decide to purchase one of these, what you want to do is you want to hold the cat upside down and just hold it between uh, your, your uh, thumb and finger on one side and your thumb and finger on the other side, and then bow it in such a way that you stretch the back muscles and you let the little side muscle kink inward just a little bit. So you relax the side muscle by letting it kink inward. At the same time, you bow the back muscles and now the cat's in a position to flip over and land on its feet. As soon as I pull my hands straight away on either side of the cat, we will see the cat flip over and land on its feet. Now, if I were giving that cat a flip, what would happen if I dropped it from higher up? Let's go ahead and try that experiment and see. So here I am standing on the table. I'm going to drop the cat from this elevated position, and we're going to see the cat flip over in about a tenth of a second, and from there it's going to be feet first all the way to the ground. If I were flipping it, what would it do? It would keep right on rotating around and uh, might come down on its back. Who knows? So I'm not going to flip it. I'm just going to pull my hand straight away, and we're going to let the muscles do their thing, and we're going to see the cat flip over and land on this soft surface that we've prepared here. And I recommend that you use a soft surface every time you drop your mechanical cat, especially while you're learning how to do it so that you don't do any damage to the cat or to the surface it might fall on. Here we go. And we see that indeed uh, the cat flips over without a torque, 
without a change in angle momentum, comes down to land on its feet. A mechanical cat. Uh, now, I'd like to tell you how you can uh, go about uh, purchasing these and where you can read more about the cat. Here's a, uh, a copy of the Physics Teacher magazine, uh, September of uh, 1995, Physics Teacher magazine. There's an article in this explaining all about this. I wrote this article uh, back at that time, and this is the publication where you can read about it. Also, educational innovations. And uh, we'll get a close-up of this as well. Educational Innovations is going to be manufacturing that, and you'll be able to get the details of where you can contact Educational Innovations and actually uh, pick up a model of the cat if you are inclined to do so.